for joining us for our Tucson Sharon Resurrection Prayer Service. We're grateful to have you join us today because we believe this is the most pivotal day in the history of the world. The most significant weekend in the entire Christian calendar. And the reason being is that this is the day where our salvation was secured. You know, many people celebrate December 25th as the birth of Jesus Christ. But the truth is, we do not know the exact date when Jesus was born. The only thing we do know for sure is Jesus was not born on December 25th. We do know that. But to the exact date of when Jesus was born, we do not know. And yet, the world celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. It is a significant event because God became man and dwelt among us. And so it is a day worth commemorating because God entered into our human sphere and took on the form of flesh. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. It's the most valuable gift the world has ever received. It is a gift from God to his children, the very gift of his son, Jesus Christ. And because of that, even though we don't know the exact day, it's worthy for acknowledgement. It's a day that's worthy to be celebrated. So though December 25th is not the date of Jesus, birth date, it does commemorate that the, the Savior was born. And so that is a day that is worth commemorating. But even more important than that, because the birth of Jesus did not secure our salvation. It is the death and resurrection of Jesus that secures our salvation. And so today, for this resurrection prayer service that we're having today, it is to commemorate our salvation being safe and secure in the person and work of Jesus Christ. So we're going to begin uh, with a word of prayer, just inviting your presence here with us today. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being in our midst today. And as this message is going out Facebook Live, on our conference call line, simultaneously, we're praying that the people of God will be encouraged. They will be encouraged to know that their salvation was secured on that glorious weekend. As a matter of fact, on that first day of the week. And so we are here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for everyone who's joining us at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we know that many of you are in a shelter in place order from the government. Um, and we understand that most of you are watching us from your, the comfort of your home. And we wanted to bring this good news to you directly to your home. And so I'm going to read a scripture reading that may befuddle you because why would I be using an Old Testament text to preach about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I simply ask that you be patient with me as I develop it. For those of you who were not with us yesterday, we encourage you to go to our website and to our YouTube link, TucsonSharonAZ.com. AdventistChurch.org. Adventist is singular. So again, that's Tucson Sharon AZ. AdventistChurch.org. And if you click on our link for YouTube, you will see the message that was preached yesterday. The message yesterday and the message today, they are intricately connected. And so to get the whole picture, you would need to see both sermons. And then you will understand why I'm using this particular text today. So on our website, TucsonSharonAZ.AdventistChurch.org, there is a link that you can click for our YouTube 
subscription and you'll see our message from yesterday. And when we're concluded today, we will upload this message today. So today I'm using a narrative from 1 Kings chapter 13, starting in verse 1, and I'll be reading from the New International Version this morning. 1 Kings chapter 13, starting at verse 1. By the word of the Lord, a man of God came from Judah to Bethel. As Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering. But the word of the Lord, he cried by the word of the Lord, he cried out against the altar. Altar, altar. This is what the Lord says. A son named Josiah will be born to the house of David. On you will be sacrificed the priest of the high places who make offerings here, and human bones will be buried on you. That same day, the man of God gave a sign. This is the sign the Lord has declared. The altar will be split apart, and the ashes on it will be poured out. When King Jeroboam heard what the man of God cried out against the altar at Bethel, he stretched out his hand from the altar and said, Seize him. Mm. But the man, but the hand, he stretched out toward the man of God, shriveled up, so that he could not pull it back. Also, the altar was split apart as its ashes poured out according to the signs given by the man of God by the word of the Lord. Then the king said to the man of God, intercede with the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God interceded with the Lord and the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reader, to the hearers, and most importantly to the doers of his blessed word. And now at this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for prayer today. A glorious day. This day commemorates the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, no matter what men may say. I hear his voice of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he is always near. Jesus is alive. Jesus is risen. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's journey and its way. And so today we are going to be praying that men and women, boys and girls around the world will receive our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the way, as the truth, and as the life. So as we're praying, we are praying for our first responders, our frontline health professionals who have put themselves literally in harm's way in order to minister to others who are in need, in order to fulfill God's purpose in their lives. They don't operate by a spirit of fear, but they operate in power of love and of a sound mind. And because it's of a sound mind, they have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that will guard their hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Therefore, they don't need to be anxious about anything, but in everything with petition and supplications, they can make their requests known unto God. And so we're praying for our front line health care professionals. I'm reminded of Joanne Linsom, who's in Michigan, 
there to minister on behalf of those who are in need. I'm thinking about all of our health professionals right here at the Tucson Sharon Church. I'm thinking of Kayla Campbell, who is a nurse. I'm thinking of Nadia Graham, who's also a nurse. I'm thinking of John Schmaling, who is a nurse practitioner. I'm thinking of Dr. Victoria Miles, who is a medical doctor. And I'm thinking of everyone that are in the front lines. We are praying, Lord God, we are praying for them and all of our health professionals right here in this church, Lord. We're praying that you will bless them. We're praying that you will protect them. We're praying that you will put your loving arms around them. And as the songwriter said, Lord, be a fence all around them every day. And not only are we praying for all health professionals, not only are we praying for all of our first responders, we are also praying for all of those who have been affected their employment because of the coronavirus. Those who have been laid off, those who've been let go, those who've seen their hours cut, I pray that they will hold on and stay strong, that God will provide for all of their needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We're praying for you today. And those who are suffering from the coronavirus itself, we want you to know that Jesus not only is the resurrected Lord, he's a healer. That if you by faith will just simply touch the hem of his garment, you will experience healing. You will experience his power. Amen. And so we're encouraged. We're praying for you today, and we're encouraging you to reach out in faith and touch the hem of his garment. And just like that woman with the issue of blood who labored for 12 years for healing, just one touch from Jesus, she was made well. We believe that that power is even available today. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. So we're praying for our healthcare professionals and first responders. We're praying for those who have been affected by this pandemic by way of employment. We are praying for those who are suffering under the coronavirus. And we're praying for all of our church members right here at the Tucson Sharon Church. And we're praying for our sister churches around the world. We're praying for our community that we will still be able to minister to them as we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays in our food distribution program. It is ongoing even in the midst of this pandemic. We're praying also for our country. We're praying for a, a healing upon our country. And we're praying that repentance will take place in our country. Repentance and reformation. Because God has truly blessed our country. But has our country blessed God? And so we're praying for our country as well. Praying for repentance. Praying for us to get back to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So for those of you who are joining us, I just simply ask for you to touch and agree. I ask for you, wherever you are, to reverently bow your heads as we seek our Lord this morning in prayer. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Father, the songwriter said, if I had 10,000 tongues, still couldn't praise you enough. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. We thank you for what Jesus did for us, Father, that weekend, that Friday when he died on the cross, that Sabbath where he rested in the tomb, and that first day of the week where we read of his glorious resurrection. So, Father, we commit to you this morning our first responders, all of our health care professionals, not just here, but throughout the nation, yea, throughout the world, those who are putting themselves at risk, those who are putting themselves in harm's way, those who did not, were not drafted, but they signed up, they enlisted to go to the front line of the 
coronavirus war. And they are being faithful and they're at their post. We pray that you will protect them. We pray that you will surround them and keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Protect them from both things seen and unseen as we touch and agree and pray for your protection. May they experience Psalms 91 each and every day because he that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. May they go into work each and every day declaring the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. Father, not only are we praying for frontline health professionals, all of our first responders, we're praying for those whose jobs, whose employment have been impacted by this virus as the nation basically shuts down all non-essential services. God, we pray during this time, they will trust you even though right now they can't even trace you. We're praying and asking, Lord God, that you will provide all of their needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, let them know all the cattle, all the gold, all of it belongs to you. And you can open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. There will not even be room enough to receive. And in those who are suffering from sickness, we come against COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke the disease. We rebuke the death in the name of Jesus. Somebody right now is on their deathbed, but they're going to have a miraculous recovery because of the name of Jesus. You might not be able to call for the elders. They may not be able to anoint you with oil, but in the name of Jesus, we declare your healing. In the name of Jesus, we declare your recovery. In the name of Jesus, we come against coronavirus in the matchless name of Jesus. So Father, we pray for everyone in our congregation. Pray that you will visit them and be with them, Lord God. We pray for our community, Lord, as we practice social distancing. We can't wait to be able to put our arms around the community once again. We pray for our nation, Lord God. We need a healing in the land. We pray for our leaders, Lord God. They need wisdom that comes from you as to what to do because while they're trying to figure it out, God, you've already worked it out. You say you know the plans that you have for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a future and a hope. And so, Lord God, may they look to you, not to the hills, but may they look to you from whence cometh our help. Because our help, it comes from the Lord. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do. And we thank you for what you've already done some 2,000 years ago. You secured our salvation when Jesus rose victoriously from the grave on the first day of the week, that glorious resurrection day. Father, we do thank you. We thank you in the name of the Father. We thank you in the name of the Son. And we thank you in the name of the Holy Ghost. And we pray that all the blood-bought souls, Facebook Live, and also on our conference call, amen. 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 And amen. At this time, we're going to be blessed with a musical selection brought to us by my daughters, Crystal and Hannah. We pray that you will enjoy this blessing.
was a time when our world needs Jesus. That time is now. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Hannah. Our world needs you right now. We're going to go right into the word of God this morning. Father in heaven, let the words of my mouth, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy